Today we're giving you the tips that you must have to prevent a misdiagnosis. After seven years, Nancy Davis was finally diagnosed with MS and has been a world-renowned advocate ever since her diagnosis. A few days ago, she met with Debbie, who was recently diagnosed with this disease as well. A few years ago, it started off as a tingling sensation in the left side of my face, and it just started growing and got worse. I went to the doctor, and, and we ran a bunch of tests, and he finally just said it might be multiple sclerosis. I was terrified. One of my biggest fears is not being able to walk and being in a wheelchair. It's been three months since I've been diagnosed, and my children don't know. I don't know how to tell them that this is going on. I'm scared for them, and I don't want them to worry. I don't know if that's a form of denial, but I'm very scared. I have a lot of unanswered questions, and it's a daily struggle to try and deal with it. Hi. Hi, Debbie. I'm Nancy. Hey, nice to meet Pleasure you. Pleasure to meet you. I know. You're scared. Oh, my God. And I was in your shoes. What are your biggest fears? My biggest fears are that I'll just not be there for my kids the way I want to be. I had three children too when I was first diagnosed and I, I know that's the thing that scared me the most. What have you discussed with your children about your illness? I don't know how to tell them. I don't want them to be scared. Sometimes by not telling your children, they're probably 10 times more scared than they need to be. You know what, you're doing your kids a favor by really leveling with them. It's important to be really honest. I'm gonna give you this little journal and I'd love you to write down in here all of your fears. When you can identify everything you're afraid of and look at it, it's easier to overcome your fears. You owe it to yourself to embrace change. Your life is never gonna be the same as it was before, but it might be better. I can do that. Nancy and Debbie are here today along with neurologist Dr. Ari Green. Welcome to both of you. So, Debbie, the visit from Nancy was helpful? It was very helpful. It made me know that I wasn't alone in this and that looking at her, she's amazing and that, that I will be okay. And Dr. Green, you are a neurologist. You deal with MS quite a bit. Right. Explain, and I think we have some MRIs, the structural changes that take place in the brain. So Travis, what we're looking at here is an MRI from someone who has MS. And these are sections of the brain taken down this way. And what we can see is there are these white spots uh, that shouldn't be there that are in the area that we refer to as the white matter. And those little spots um, represent areas which could be edema, they could be inflammation, or this could be a scar tissue from, from the multiple sclerosis. And uh, those spots there, if we go to the next slide, we can see a close-up that are characteristic or particular distribution that we tend to see with MS. But also these black areas in the middle that are in everybody's brain, they're different in uh, patients who have MS in that sometimes there's atrophy or shrinkage of the brain that occurs with time because of the injury uh, that goes on with, with, with MS. So what we have now is the opportunity to use uh, drugs that have been approved by the FDA. We refer to them as the ABC drugs. They're all uh, largely injectable medications that patients take and um, what they can do is help uh, adjust uh, turn the thermostat down on the inflammation to reduce the amount of inflammation that's going on in, in a patient's brain. And that's the goal with the therapy, is to prevent the inflammation and, uh, and the injury early so that we can make a difference over the long term. And Nancy, you have had a particular treatment that's been helpful? Um, when I was diagnosed, none of these drugs existed, right. and I needed to figure out how to get better in light of that there was nothing. And I've really gone the homeopathic route, which is not necessarily right for everybody else, but it has worked for me. Um, whenever I have an attack, I, I go to a homeopathic doctor and they give me supplements of what my body seems to be lacking. 